Hey guys, I'm Rich from Neowin, and today we're unboxing the Misfit Vapor X. So this was announced in mid-August, August 14th, and it's the latest Snapdragon Wear 3100 smartwatch. So I have a couple others here. This is the Fossil Gen 5 smartwatch. This is the Fossil Sport. Both of them have a Snapdragon Wear 3100. So the big difference between the 3100 and the 2100 is, well, it's a change in architecture where uh, Qualcomm kind of took what we know of as big little in smartphones and scaled it down to smartwatches. So they, they're calling it big, small, tiny with three different tiers. So the way big little works is that you have these powerful cores that handle those powerful tasks that you do. And then you have efficient cores that are less powerful and don't use as much battery life. And those handle those less powerful tasks like notification sync and stuff like that. So, now we have different tiers of that in the smartwatch. Okay, so like if you have an octa-core chipset in a phone, it's usually four big cores, four little cores, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, big, small, tiny. And what that does is it unlocks things like you get a full color ambient display, um, not full color, like 16 colors or something. You could have a second hand on the ambient display and it should provide better battery life as well. My biggest issue with it though has always been that um, the main architecture hasn't changed. So when Android Wear first launched, it's now called Wear OS, but when it first launched, these smartwatches used Snapdragon 400. And Snapdragon 400 used to be used in lower mid-tier phones, and um, obviously there wasn't a, a dedicated wearable chipset yet because wearables weren't a thing yet. They had to become a thing. So that was ARM Cortex A7, the same architecture that's used, that was used in the Snapdragon 200, very low-end stuff. The Snapdragon 2100 was kind of based on the Snapdragon 210, so it was still Cortex-A7. And that hasn't changed in the 3100. It's still Cortex-A7. So performance increases aren't really there, but Wear OS has come a long way. So it's kind of a heavier operating system than it used to be. Uh, I had some real performance issues with this, but not so much with this. And I realized that the difference was because this has a gig of RAM, this has 500 megabytes of RAM, so or 512. So this also has 512. So I assume I'm I'm probably going to run into those same kind of performance issues. Um, I also have Fossil watches out here because Misfit is owned by Fossil, so it is the same company making this stuff. Um, we have some stuff on the box here. Misfits noun. See. Definition here. Uh, Rebels, trailbla Trailblazers, Mavericks, the round pegs and the square holes. Um, yeah, so a little, little bit of Steve Jobs stuff there. So, uh, you know, and, and I, I get where they're going. Um, hashtag be a misfit. You know, um, wear OS by Google. <laughs> but yeah, so the Misfit Vapor X, uh, there's a little thing right here that says, Nothing square about me, you know. So they, they also uh, they launched a Dare to Be Different campaign, and they took some like celebrities or some artists or whatever actors that that kind of felt like they're out of place in some way that they feel like they're misfits and and they represent the brand, you know. So I I, I, I get what they're doing there. I think it's kind of cool. I also think this is a cool looking watch too. So we're gonna get this open. All right, can I just pull this out? No, I gotta pull that up first. All right, now we can pull it out, I, I think. All right. <laughs> so there, there's the watch. Let's see what else is in here. We have some paperwork, quick start guide, warranty information, and that's it. I assume that there's a charger around here somewhere, but I don't see it just yet. It's probably over here. Um, so let's just close that up. All right, yeah, we have some stuff over here. Okay, there's just a charging cable. There's no uh, AC adapter. It's the same charging cable that comes with a Fossil watch, and it's got two pins right over here, and which is one of my favorite things. And the question is, ah, there it goes. It comes right off like that. I don't have to undo the strap. Okay, so we're going to take this little piece of plastic off here. There it goes. This, By the way, this is a beautiful watch. So we're going to take a closer look at this. While this is setting up, we can take a closer look. It is beautiful. I love the glass that that they use. Like compared to the Fossil Sport, which is just that kind of regular flat glass, and 
And while the, the Gen 5 smartwatch is beautiful as well, it's also still flat. Like, you have a subtle curve around the edges. It's a, it's a really stunning look, and I, I just, I kind of love it, actually. It's, um, you know, standard matte black casing, and it is uh, made of an aluminum alloy. It weighs only 43 grams, so it's pretty light. I don't think it's quite as light as the Fossil Sport, but... Um, you know, for a, it, this could be your sporty style smartwatch. I, I, I like it a lot. So when I mentioned about the charger, I do love the charger. You notice that there are two rings on the bottom. Now, now Fossil doesn't use wireless charging in their smartwatches. They all have these rings. And what I, what I don't, I usually prefer wireless charging because it's easy and Watches that have pins on the bottom, they can get dirty. You know, you sweat under it and, and they can kind of get corroded over time. And so charging can be a hassle. But these aren't regular pins because the charger here has two pins and you can put them anywhere on this entire ring. So it's not two tiny pins that, that can get dirty. It can go anywhere on those rings. And it, it works really well. I like it a lot. So this is still setting up. But... See, this is the band that it comes with, and it's um, it's a little different than your typical uh, sporty style band. It looks like it should be a little more comfortable. It's a regular silicon strap, but uh, you can see there's a little bit of texture on the inside there. Okay, uh, regular um, few three three buttons on the side. This is your main button that's going to switch between apps, um, and we'll see what the other ones do in a moment. Actually, okay, so that's about done so we're gonna go through a little wear os tutorial which is one of the most annoying things about wear os to me wait is it not there usually yeah so yeah you have to go through a tutorial anytime you reset a, a smartwatch or you um you know <laughs> get a new one so we can tap to sign into google fit if you swipe in from the right you get google fit and we will so you see there's a lot of loading going on that's um Something that, that, that I, again, I, I didn't see as much of on the, the Fossil Gen 5 smartwatch and I saw a lot more of on the Fossil Sport. Like, there's just some performance issues that, that go into this and it's, it's a real shame. So, let's just cycle through these. I wish it was a little easier to set up and unfortunately, it's just not. So, all right, we should be signed into this, hopefully. Now we can go back. All right, we press the button, that brings us to all apps. You can see that it does stutter a little bit. There's our quick settings up here. If we swipe up, we're gonna get notifications and a little tutorial on what to do with notifications. And it's not working out very well. All right, tap again to collapse the notification, swipe to dismiss. So you can see that there are some, some performance issues right out of the gate. Obviously it's still setting up. It does get better over time. Press button for all apps. Yes, we did that already. I do I do hate this tutorial, but it is a nice way for people to see how uh, Wear OS works if you're not familiar with it. Okay, so enjoy your watch. Yay. Um, there's no easy way to clear that either. It's <laughs> But yeah. Um, it does, you notice some progress meters. It does get better over time. Apps are gonna download, things happen in the background, but um, it's never gonna be, um, you know, perfect. And that, that's an issue with Wear OS. It's an issue with the Wear OS ecosystem. But I also think that, there we go. I also think that when it comes to a smartwatch, it's, um, fashion is more important than actual performance. You know, so the thing is, we're gonna check for updates here too. Oh, we're not on. Okay, now we're on settings, yeah. Um, I, I think that fashion is more important. I think that, that in general, like what, what are you using a smartwatch for? You know, you're, you're using it probably just to see notifications without pulling out your phone. Um, a couple other things too, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna maybe use it for driving directions while you're, oh, there is an update, so that's good. Maybe performance will get a little better. But use it for driving directions so you can just glance at your wrist and see where you have to go. Uh, stuff like that, so, so, you know, you also don't want it to look like crap. And I think that's more important for something that you're actually wearing. You know, as tech enthusiasts, I do think that we tend to get caught up on performance. And when when sometimes it's it's not necessary, at least for the average consumer, where like like you do have to wear this. And you can see I am wearing an Apple Watch. I'll get into that in a second. But um, 
you know, so, like, that was one thing I loved about the, the Gen 5 smartwatch that was under a pile of cables over there, or one cable, but it's beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful device. It looks like a watch you'd want to wear. Um, the Fossil Sport, on the other hand, is not quite as beautiful, but it's super light. So if you're an athlete, like if you're going, if you're taking a watch to the gym, you want it to track your steps, your fitness, this is, a pre this is pretty good for that. You know, it's not the prettiest watch, but um, it comes in nice colors and stuff like that. So um, this kind of seems to be a nice combination of both, actually, where it's, it's really light. It, it seems like it would be a great fitness device. At the same time... Um, it's stylish. It's it's a nice round aluminum body that that looks it looks good. But um, I think that's more important than performance. I think you know as long as the battery gets you through the day, which is also really important. You don't want a dead watch. On your, let me tell you, that's the worst. When you have a smartwatch that dies in the middle of the day, it's like, what do I do with this thing? I have this dead electronic on my wrist. Do I take it off and put it in my pocket? Because that's a pain. The easiest way to carry it is on my wrist, but it's dead. Why do I want to do that? You know, so battery life is important, but I'm just, I don't know if, if performance is as important as, as I even crack it up to be. Um, like, the reason that I'm wearing an Apple Watch, I said I was going to get to that. That's, um... You know, this is a tricky time for me when it comes to Wear OS reviews, I gotta say. Um, I'm actually reviewing two Android phones right now, which I, I would love to pair with. I, I chose the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G. Uh, the issue with that is that I'm a T-Mobile subscriber, and the two phones are 5G phones from Sprint, and they're locked to Sprint. So uh, my T-Mobile SIM is in an iPhone right now, so hence the Apple Watch. And... Um, it's tricky because obviously reviewing a smartwatch, I want it to be with my main device because when it's with your main device, you get your text no uh, notifications and all that good stuff. So um, you'll you'll probably see in this review, you'll see me talk about using it with an I with a, an Android phone and an iPhone because I am going to be switching devices with this. I, like right now, it's with the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G. Um, Wear OS is compatible with iPhones. It's a little more limited. You can't make calls and stuff. Uh, Fossil did promise that with this, you'll be able to make calls when paired with an iPhone. They're, they're doing something with that later this year. And I don't know if that's going to work with either the Fossil Sport or the Misfit Vapor X. So it's really cool. Um, this thing is $199 right now. That's a limited price. It's going to be $279 at, at full price, which is a little pricey, although I do think it's very stylish. It's going to be a very nice watch to wear. And I'm probably, now that I've even said out loud that I can use it with an iPhone, I'm probably just going to reset it and pair it with, <laughs> with my iPhone right now. Um, yeah, and, and it would be so easy. Like, I would put down the iPhone and just use an Android phone, which obviously I switch back and forth all the time. But the issue, <laughs> the, the main issue with that is that I just... Um, I've already got two Android phones that I'm carrying around with me. You know, it, it's <laughs> it's just a tricky time. Uh, the display is AMOLED. I didn't mention that. It's 328 PPI. Um, so you can see it is a beautiful display. It's a beautiful design. It has that, it's it's sort of a, a thick bezel, I mean, I guess, compared to this. But, um, but it's nice. It's got that kind of uh, curved glass edge. It's, it's the rounded... The rounded edges make it look really nice. I like it a lot. So uh, I'm going to have a review on this in, you know, a few weeks. And so stay tuned for that. I'm Richard Neowin. Have a great night.